Ramadan Kareem everyone and welcome back to another episode of Ramadan Spotlight where we'll be showing you how to add a special touch to your Ramadan experience. We'll be shining our spotlight on how to keep your Ramadan stylish and break out those cultural vintage threads. So kick back, relax and we'll be right back. Ramadan is the perfect time to focus on self-improvement and get organized. Dunya Madara, a young Bahraini professional, is here to share how you can enjoy a productive Ramadan. Hi, my name is Dunya Madara and I am professionally young. And I'm here to give you five tips to plan a successful work week. A lot of us are still working from home and it's not easy to plan a week that we can be productive in if we're working from home away from our teams and our colleagues at work. So here are five simple steps to follow. Step number one, organize, categorize, and prioritize. What do you have in the coming week? Do you have meetings? Do you have conference calls? Do you have emails that you need to send? Organize them in a list of the most important to the least important. The task that takes the most time to the task that takes the least time. Make sure you're talking to your team and your managers to make sure that your priorities are also aligned. This way, you can just look at your to-do list and make sure that your priorities are up to date. Step number two, make sure that you're using some sort of schedule or a calendar. After you prioritize your tasks, you need to make sure that alerts are set up before every single conference call, meeting, brainstorming session, or every time some project or something is due. Try to set up an alert five to 15 minutes before the task is due or before the meeting starts. This way, you can stay up to date and make sure that you're not missing any kind of appointment or deadline. There are a ton of websites and apps that you could be using today to make sure that you stay as organized as possible. If you're using a desktop version, make sure you download the app as well so that if you're out and about in the house while work is piling up, you can get notification alerts on an app to make sure you're also up to date that way. Step number three, communicate everything. Are you working in a large team or maybe a small one and you have a single manager or maybe multiple levels of managerials around you? Make sure that you're communicating all of the tasks that are given to you that you need to give to other people and make sure that everyone is up to date on all the deadlines that are being shared. If there's no point working in a team if your timelines are completely scattered all over the place, right? So make sure that everything is being communicated, priorities, tasks, and even maybe little wins. Did you just finish a project that you're proud of? Communicate that as well. Communicating while we're working from home will make sure that you're really staying close to your team as much as possible. Step number four, working from home is not an easy task. A lot of people think it's like quiet time. Well, actually it can get a little complicated. So my tip number four for you is to organize your personal time and personal schedule as well. Make sure that your resting times are organized, that you're starting at a dedicated time and that you're ending work at a dedicated time as well. Don't work too early into the day or too late into the day. Make sure you have time to rest and make sure you have time to socialize as much as you can within your household. And finally, step number five, have something to look forward to. Work has a way of piling up and time can be sometimes too slow or too fast in a regular workday. So make sure that you're looking forward to certain brainstorm sessions with your team. Are you talking to someone that you really have fun with, a colleague that you work with? Maybe you have a fun conference call coming up. Make sure that you're looking forward to a couple of tasks during the day and that will help the day pass as well. And there you have it. Five tips to help you organize your work day while at home during Ramadan. Ramadan Kareem from everyone here. And make sure that you're using your time during Ramadan to really reflect on organizing your work day. I think it'll help you a lot. Speaking of keeping it stylish, we all know that Ramadan is a perfect occasion for getting dressed up. Let's take a closer look at what Bahraini designer Sara Dosiri has to deem fashionable for Ramadan. Uh, I've started Beleza back in 2018. 
uh, I used to watch uh, since I was a child fashion shows and uh, when I grew up I watched and I'm still watching Project Runway, Next in Fashion so I started designing for my cousins and family uh, because they loved the collection, uh, I said, okay, let's take a step forward and uh, I opened my Instagram accounts. Uh, so I prepare for my Ramadan collection uh, before like uh, two to three months before Ramadan. Uh, I start by uh, designing first and then searching for the right fabric and then executing the designs. This year I took uh, my business forward by improving my branding uh, from receipts to logos, bags and tags. For my Ramadan collection I chose variety of colors, uh, black, white, uh, off-white, uh, yellow, green, pink, uh, and for the designs I, I designed a variety of uh, designs from simple to gathering designs or what we call it Ghabga design. Uh, the latest trends in Ramadan 2020 is uh, ombre fabrics, tools, uh, calligraphies and uh, oversized sleeves. Uh, for the colors, uh, I can see that gold and silvers are uh, the latest trends and um, the bright colors in general. Now that we've covered the latest trend in Ramadan fashion, let's get cultural and explore the rich history of our culture's traditional garments. The Kingdom of Bahrain has its own unique style of traditional clothing. All women's thobes share a few basic features such as large cuts and open to form billowing sleeves. And in many varieties, length and back enough to trail on the floor. The simplest of traditional thobes is called a kurar, which is worn every day at home by Bahraini and other Gulf women. It is made from cotton and polyester fabric in all kinds of patterns with chain stitch embroidery at the neck opening and sleeves. Older women tend to wear kurars for formal occasions while younger ones wear them more informally. Kurar embroidery produces beautiful ribbons of gold zeri, silver zeri and brisam which are made by hand and used to decorate clothing. It is the result of group effort in which the weight of the final product depends on the number of women involved in the process. The abaya is a black cloth worn by Muslim women in some regions of the Middle East, especially Arab Gulf countries, over normal clothes when leaving the house. The traditional simple Arab woman has always been known for her black abaya and representing her true identity. The abaya has become a subject of some experimentation with different types and weights of silky material taking over. Many abaya designers managed to adapt this traditional custom to keep up with the requirements of modernization. 
while not neglecting, of course, the importance of preserving modesty, dignity, and the traditional heritage embodied by wearing black fabric, as they started presenting the abaya with different ideas that enjoy beauty standards by incorporating the latest trends universality in this field, while preserving the goal of wearing it, as it symbolizes the inherited identity and traditions. Abayas were distinguished by their dependence on light fabrics such as silk, fine crepe, and light velvet, due to the high temperatures that characterize these countries. As for the gowns that spread in the Levant, they were woven from wool, thick velvet, and cashmere, and they were relied on bright colors, embroidery, and trimmings. Fasting is as tough as it is rewarding. Be sure to follow these easy tips for a smooth transition like iftar. Drink as much water as possible. Drinking plenty of water, iftar, and suhoor reduces your risk of dehydration during fasting. Make every effort to drink at least eight glasses of fluids daily before dawn and after sundown. Fluids include juices, milk, beverages, and soups, but water is the best choice for you. Ideally, you should also cut down on caffeinated drinks like coffee, tea, and soft drinks as these have diuretic effect and promote fluid loss. A well-balanced diet is key to healthy fasting during Ramadan. So what should you eat during suhoor? Suhoor needs to be wholesome to provide enough energy to last during the long hours of fasting. Suhoor should include the following, fruits and vegetables. They are essential during fasting as they increase the feeling of fullness and help prevent constipation. They also contain vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals that are vital for good health. Rice and alternatives, high fiber carbohydrate foods, like brown rice and wholemeal bread, take longer to digest and helps to sustain energy levels longer. Meat and alternatives, skinless chicken, fish, and low fat dairy products. They are a great source of protein while limiting your fat intake. They help repair and build body tissue and build up your immune system. Consuming high calcium dairy products also helps maintain strong bones. Those that are lactose intolerant can choose lactose-free milk or calcium-fortified soybean milk or even nut milk, alternatives such as almond milk and cashew milk. And that's all for today, but be sure to catch us on another episode of Ramadan Spotlights tomorrow, same time. Have a blessed time and a wonderful evening. Goodbye.